Professor Richard Wolf worries that the worst bubble, stock market bubble in the history of capitalism is about to burst. Check this out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. I'm Harvin here with you on the line with us is Professor Richard Wolf, the economist, co-founder of Democracy at Work.info, author of numerous books, his most recent Understanding Socialism, and RD Wolf with two Fs.com, also one of his websites. You can tweet him at Prof Wolf, as in Professor Wolf. And Professor Wolf, welcome back. There, there is a uh, a story over at Yahoo News about how the Fed has raised their balance sheet from 4.2 trillion to 7 trillion. These are uh, assets that they bought, uh, corporate bonds and corporate and stocks and things. Um, that's a mind-boggling amount of money, three trillion dollars. And and then we've got a report that the, 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 that just came out a day or so ago that there's a over 800 billion dollar. Um, deficit just last month in the month of June, which is you know greater than typically an annual deficit. Um, Japan's debt to GDP ratio has been over 200 percent for some years. Ours has been around you know floating around 100 um, percent, but this is going to push it up. And then the Fed is doesn't even have anything to do with the national debt. Can you explain kind of the difference between those two? How sustainable this is if we can learn anything from Japan? Um, and what this means to the average American. Okay, let me try. Um, first, you're right. This is an unprecedented injection of brand new money into the economy. That's what it means. The Federal Reserve is our central bank. That is its responsibility. And it has reacted both to the pandemic, but also to the serious recession in the United States that began, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research, in February of this year, actually a bit before the virus really hit us. Uh, it's worse than anything we had foreseen, both of these things, and the Federal Reserve's response is to do what it mainly is called upon to do, which is to shape the monetary system of the United States uh, to solve its problems. It now believes clearly that the problem is so severe, so profound, so threatening to everything that the United States economy and society uh, have been and are, that an unprecedented injection of over three trillion dollars and more counting, because they're doing this every day now, uh, has to be done, number one. Number two, it is separate from the national debt. The national that is not not something that the Federal Reserve directly uh, is concerned with. The national debt has to do with something done by the United States Treasury, not the Federal Reserve. And the job of the Treasury is to borrow money when the government spends more than it takes in in taxes. Since we're in a crisis, pandemic plus recession, uh, the government has to spend like crazy for the same reasons of stimulating the economy that drive the Federal Reserve. But in order for the government to do that, the Treasury, uh, spend a lot, it either would have to tax people, which would make it even more unpopular than it already is, or else borrow. Since the Trump administration gave one of the biggest tax cuts in history, barely two years ago, December of uh, tw uh, 2017, uh, we're in a very bad place when it comes to spending a lot of stimulus money, so the Treasury borrows, issues IOUs, borrows money, and spends like the proverbial sailor. So we have the Treasury pumping in stimulus by borrowing money that would otherwise sit there, and the Federal Reserve pumping money into the economy, so of course any astute observer should understand that after all the dust clears, the extra money being created out of nothing by the Federal Reserve finds its way in part into the hands of the government to fund this extraordinary uh, spending in excess of taxes. The last thing, this combination means that there is no mystery about the peculiar and rather sick performance of our capitalism right now, in which we have over 50 million people having to go on unemployment for shorter or longer periods of time. 
a desperate uh, decline in the standard of living of the mass of our people on the one hand and a booming stock market on the other. And the reason is simple. All that extra money that the Federal Reserve pumps in, only part of it funds the deficit spending of the U.S. government. The other part goes directly into the stock market where it fuels the buying and selling of stocks as they are flipped from one person to another, everybody using the easy money they can get, the new money from the Federal Reserve, to buy shares and sell them to the other guy who's doing exactly the same thing. And that produces what we call a stock market bubble, which is what everybody who is watching this process is holding their breath about, because if and when that happens, everything is going to crash. And the Federal Reserve, we all know, is so terrified that it has committed itself to keep pumping in money as long as necessary. But that's an open-ended invitation to produce what could be the worst bubble in the history of capitalism. Wow. And, and uh, you know, basically, it's like the old saying, we have a wolf by the ears and don't know how to let him go. Um, exactly. Uh, and, safely and, and, you know, go. Everyone says, gee, the Federal Reserve will keep pumping in the money to keep this rising stock market going. Yeah, maybe it will. Uh, then again, in the end, these are companies. And if our underlying economy disintegrates, which is what's going on, then eventually these companies will not be able to deliver the right. dividends or the kind of real income that the people speculating in the stocks will expect. And then they'll all run to the, to the door. And then the people who have been the last ones to buy realize they may get stuck with the unsellable share, so they'll quickly drop the price. And we can see the crash down literally unfolding if and when any kind of shock happens to drive people in the stock market from the kind of so, view now that it'll never stop, which is typical of bubbles, to the view, right. I've got to get out, I've got to get out, which is typical of what happens when the bubbles burst. So uh, what do you think about this theory that J. Powell, number one, is not an economist. He was a bankster. He's the, the first non-economist in a long, long time. Number two, he has clearly been politically influenced, intimidated, and threatened by Trump and, you know, doing something that no Fed chair has ever done before. What do you think about this theory that if Joe Biden wins in November, the day after the election, that's the point at which J. Powell says, OK, we're no longer going to support this thing and all hell breaks loose. And the Republicans and Donald Trump blame it all on the fact that Americans elected a Democrat and the market freaked out. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that a possible scenario? You bet. Mr. Powell has. Look, the stock market going up, if you pay attention to the evening news, is the only thing that this president, now desperate, can point to. He's presided over the worst uh, failure in dealing with the pandemic imaginable. You know, this country has 4.5% of the world's population and 25% of the world's COVID cases and COVID deaths. I mean, that's a screaming failure if you ever saw one. And ditto the economy. So if there wasn't a stock market being boomed up by the Federal Reserve, there would be nothing for this uh, president to point to, uh, to exculpate himself, at least with those who are rich. So, yes, they might bail the minute Mr. Biden uh, w wins the election, if he does, and that would plunge the new administration into a horrific crisis, not so different in a way from what Bush uh, handed over to Mr. Obama.